Hey guys, Mr. Backberg here. This is part two of lesson 3.4. We're gonna focus on solving logarithmic equations in this video, and I've also got one application type problem at the end that we'll run through. Doing a quick review of some of the properties that we've talked about here in chapter three. Remember, we've got a one-to-one -one property that works for both exponentials and logarithms. If we have the same base exponential or same base logarithm on both sides, we can just cross those things off, ignore them, and look at those x and y values that are either powers or the things that we're doing the logarithm of. We've also got a product property which lets us split multiplication with logarithms into two separate logarithms with addition between them. We've got a quotient property that lets us turn a division logarithm problem into a subtraction problem. And then remember we can always rewrite logarithms as exponentials or vice versa. We could also go exponential form to logarithmic form. So here we go, first example. We've got log base three of five x minus one equals log base three of x plus seven. Very first thing I see is we have base three logarithms on both sides. So I'm thinking this is gonna be a one-to-one -one property equation. So let's just cross off those log base threes and look at it as five x minus one equals x plus seven. Now we're just gonna do some solving, which means get the x values on one side and the numbers on the other. So I'm going to subtract this x over to the left-hand side. So we got four x minus one equals seven. Add this one over to the right-hand side. So we've got four x equals eight. Last step in order to get x all by itself, all we'll have to do is divide by that four so we get x equals two. Looking at the next example, we've got log base three of five x plus 13 minus log base three of six equals log base three of three x. Now, I see log base threes everywhere, but we can't use the one-to-one -one property yet to cross those things off because we've actually got two logarithms happening on the left-hand side. We could use that quotient property in reverse though. We could take the stuff on the left-hand side and condense it down into a single logarithm. Since it's subtraction, we're gonna turn it into a fraction. So we take these two logarithms, combine them into a single logarithm, base three. We take the first thing, the five x plus 13, put it on top of the fraction, put the six on bottom of the fraction, and then that's gonna equal our log base three of three x. Now we've got just a single log base three on both sides. So I'm gonna cross those things off using that one-to-one -one property. Then our equation says five x plus 13 over six equals three x. Now this left-hand side has a fraction look to it, so I wanna get rid of that by multiplying that six over to the right-hand side. So we get five x plus 13 equals 18 x. Maybe we decide to subtract this 5x over to the right-hand side. Then we've got 13 equals 13x. Last step, divide both sides by 13. So we get an x value of 1. A couple more one-to-one -one property examples. We've got log base 4 of 3x plus 2 equals log base 4 of 6 minus x. Since these are both base 4 logarithms, I'm going to cross those things out. So we've got three x plus two equals six minus x. I'm going to add this x over to the left-hand side and subtract the two. I'll just do those things at the same time. We get four x equals four. Divide both sides by four and we get an x value of one. With the next example, log base six of three x plus 14 minus log base six of five equals log base six of two x. Can't use the one-to-one -one property yet since there's two logarithms on the left-hand side, but we can condense those things down using that quotient property in reverse. So we end up with log base six of three x plus 14 all over five equals log base six of two x. Now that we've got just a single base six logarithm on both sides, Let's use our one-to-one -one property to cross those things off. Three x plus 14 over five equals two x. Now in order to get rid of this fraction on the left-hand side, we'll multiply both sides by five. So we get three x plus 
14 equals 10x. Subtract this 3x over to the right hand side. We get 14 equals 7x. Divide both sides by the 7 and we end up with an x value of 2. With this next example, we're not going to be able to use a one-to-one -one property because we've only got a single natural log happening. I still like the idea of trying to get this x all by itself, so I'm going to start moving some things around. So I'm going to subtract the 5 over to the right-hand side. We get 2 natural log of x equals negative 1. Divide both sides by 2, we get the natural log of x equals negative 1 half. Now, like I said, we can't use a one-to-one -one property here, but I do like the idea of maybe rewriting this thing as an exponential equation. Remember, natural logs are base e logarithms. So if we use our rewriting property, it would be that e to the negative one-half power equals x. And then from here, we could just type this into our calculator. Doing similar things to this next one, again, trying to get this x all by itself, so maybe we subtract the 6 over to the right-hand side, so we get 3 natural log of x equals negative 2. Divide both sides by 3, so we get the natural log of x equals negative 2 thirds, and then again, I'm going to rewrite this as an exponential. Natural logs are base e, so it goes e to the negative 2 thirds power equals x. And then again, we could type this one into our calculator if we wanted to. These next examples are going to be very similar to those last ones we were doing, but notice we're working with different bases here. This first one is a base 5 logarithm. The one on bottom is a base 4 logarithm. We're still going to treat them the same. We're trying to get that x all by itself. First thing I see happening here is this 2 on the outside. So we're going to divide both sides by 2. We get log base 5 of 3x equals 2. Now, in order to get rid of this logarithm, if we rewrite this one, this has a base of 5, so it's going to go 5 squared equals 3x. Well, 5 squared is just 25 equals 3x. Divide by 3 on both sides, and we get x equals 25 thirds. Doing similar things with this one. Divide the 3 over to the right-hand side, so we get log base 5 4 of 6x equals 3. Rewriting this one as an exponential, we've got 4 to the third power equals 6x. 4 to the third power is 64 equals 6x. And then if we divide both sides by 6, we end up being able to reduce this fraction. Uh, both of these are divisible by 2, so we'd end up with 32 over 3 equals our x value. Sometimes we do have to be a little bit careful about those answers we get back when we're solving these logarithms, and you'll see what I mean as we go through and solve this one. So very first thing I see on the left hand side are two separate logarithms being added together. Well what I'm going to do is use my product property in reverse to put those things back together. So it says log of x times x minus 9 equals 1. Now I'm actually going to multiply these things together right away. So we've got log of x squared minus 9x by distributing that x value equals 1. Now if we continue with what we've been doing, this logarithm is a base 10 logarithm. So if we rewrite this in exponential form, it says 10 to the first power equals x squared minus 9x. Well 10 to the first power is just 10. I see a quadratic, so in order to solve a quadratic we need a 0 on one side. So I'm going to subtract this 10 over to the right hand side. So we get 0 equals x squared minus 9x minus 10. Now we can either try to factor this or run the quadratic formula. I'm pretty sure it'll factor though. I think we can go x plus 1 and x minus 10. Now setting each one of these equal to 0 and solving x plus 1 equals 0 means that x equals negative 1, and x minus 10 equals 0 means that x equals 10. Now if we were to actually check our answers on this one, that would mean plugging each of these x values in to make sure we actually get an answer back. And we run into a little bit of an issue if we try to plug in negative 1. Because up here, when we do the log of negative 1, 
Well, remember, negative numbers don't fall in the domain of logarithms. There's no power of 10 that'll land us at a negative 1 answer. So this negative 1 isn't actually a solution to this equation, but 10 will end up working. Taking a look at this last example for this video, we've got $1,000 that we're going to deposit into an account that'll pay a six and a quarter percent interest. It's gonna be continuously compounded, so that's gonna be that PERT formula that we've used before. And what we wanna do is figure out how long it's gonna take us to double our money. Well, we're starting with $1,000 as that principal investment. So in order for our money to double, this A value on the left-hand side, well, that's going to be $2,000. Filling in the rest of the formula on the right-hand side, we've got E raised to the power of 0 0.0625, because remember, we need to do a decimal slide on that percent. T, now we're trying to isolate this T value, get it all by itself. So the first thing I think I would do is divide this 1,000 over to the left-hand side. So we get two equals e to the power of 0 0.0625t. Now in order to solve this one, I think what I would do is take the natural log of both sides, because then what that allows us to do is cancel out this natural log and the e, and all we've got left over is the 0 0.0625t on the right-hand side. Left-hand side is gonna be the natural log of two, then in order to get t all by itself, all we have to do is divide by that 0 0.0625 on both sides. Now this turns into a calculator problem. We have to do the natural log of 2 divided by 0 0.0625. And if we round off to two decimal places, we should get about 11.09 years. That's going to be it for this video. Please remember to fill out the Google form linked in the description down below. And thanks for watching.